So without pointers, we'd find it really difficult to build a general purpose CPU that can do anything. Rather than me drawing it, let me get out my book back from the thing of the original IBM PCs 8088. And effectively, when the Mac boots up, when the PC boots up, they boot up like this. Now, what do we have inside a CPU? Well, there's, there's a bit of it which will do all the arithmetic, do all the logic. So we'll add numbers together, it will do various Boolean algebraic things. We'll forget about them for now. We'll talk about them some other time. We've probably already talked about them. The other thing you've got are registers. So a register is just literally a small place where you can store a bit of information. Well, some of them do store a bit, but actually you're going to store a few more bits and then you'll get a byte or maybe two bytes worth. So let's go with what the 8088 had and it can store generally the registers are either a byte or two bytes. If we have a look at this book on programming, the 8088 project book, it's got a list in here of the various bits inside it. So we've got, here we are, the arithmetic logic unit, some registers here, some more temporary registers, and then these general ones here and a few more that we've got around. So we've got some 8-bit and 16-bits we can combine to use in either way. And then we've got these 16-bit, oh look, pointers, we'll come back to that. So all these registers do is allow you to store a 16-bit value or an 8-bit value. So they're built into the CPU and the instructions in the CPU will let you set a value in them, add a value to what's in something in there or read a value from one of them. That's fine. You've got what? One, two, three, four, 16-bit or eight, eight-bit values. That's not much data. And you've also got the problem is, well, where do you get the program from? How do you get more data out of your memory to access it? Well, the way you do that is if you look you have other registers, which are called pointer and index registers. And this is why you need pointers or you can't build a computer. Because what these are used for is that these say, well, OK, I don't have this value here, but I'm going to store here where it is in memory. So I'm going to store in, say, for example, the stack pointer, not the stack, but I'm going to store a value that points to where the stack is in memory. Now, really easy way to understand how pointers work. Think of it like the index of the book. So if I want to know about the stack pointer, I will go to the index, if I can find the index, and somewhere it says stack pointer. Uh, here we are, stack pointer, see pages 9 and 10. So if I want to find out something, I don't go to page 9 and 10 where it is, I go to the index and it tells me where it is, so I then go to page 9 and 10. Pointers work exactly like that. They tell you where to find the information, just like an index in a book. Simple. Right, now why do we need them to make the computer work? Well, there's two reasons why I need them. Firstly, how do we execute code? Well, the code, the program, the instruction that's going to execute are stored in memory, and you need to know where that is. How does the CPU do that? Go back to our thing, and if we look carefully, we find among these registers, we talked about 16-bit pointer registers. Oh, look, over here, 16-bit segment registers and the instruction pointer, another pointer. Again, it's a special register, and all this is doing is storing the value of where in memory to find the instruction that you're going to execute. So when the CPU wants to execute an instruction, which is what it does all the time, it goes to the instruction pointer and it's got the address of where that instruction is. So it'll look in the instruction pointer and it'll contain, say, FFF F0 in hex. That's the initial point where a PC will start executing code when you switch it on. So it goes to that address, looks that up in memory, and gets the value that's in memory and reads it into the CPU where it can start processing it. And it'll get that instruction, execute it, whatever it is, and then it'll increment the instruction pointer by however, however big that instruction was. 8088 instructions can vary in size. It'll be one byte, two bytes, etc. These days, they can get up to 16 bytes on a x86 chip, but it'll increase the instruction pointer to point to the next instruction. And then it does the same thing. So it looks up where the instruction is in memory, fetches it, and so on. So if we don't have pointers, we can't actually even execute code. We need that instruction pointer, or as it's called on other CPUs, the program counter, same thing, it's just clearer here on the x86, that it's the instruction pointer. We need that to know where to go and get the instructions. So without pointers, you can't make a CPU work, or get values from memory at least. That's fine for executing code, but this needs to execute on data. How do we get the data in? The same thing. We have pointers, that contain the address or registers that contain the address of where data is in memory. So every time you access a variable in C, 
the assembly that's generated is almost certainly going to be getting that out at some point from memory and putting it into a register in the CPU. And that will be done by having a pointer, a value of where this is in memory, going and fetching it and then using that in the instruction that's being executed, whatever that might be, to add, say, it onto another register or whatever the CPU needs doing. So again, without pointers, you can't get data from memory, you can't store data back into memory, so you can't build a computer. Without computers, you can forget your functional programming, you can forget your Y combinator, you can forget your hash tables, your linked list, anything. You cannot build a computer without pointers. These leaks happen all the time, and so passwords are being just dumped out onto the internet all the time. So there's this password list called RockU, uh, which is uh, a bit of a game changer in password cracking, if that's a thing, right? Um, and, and basically, it's 14 million or so passwords, I think.